Welcome to Toffee TV. It is my three things from Everton to Crystal Palace won at Goodison Park. The Toffees have won their first Premier League game of the season. And it feels good. It feels really good to uh, to talk about a victory at Goodison today and a hugely important victory. And hopefully now we can start to, to build on it. Um, big win. Coming from behind is, is a big psychological thing. Um... Let's let's not try to go behind too many times in games and have to try and retain it. It's the first time it's happened under this manager actually that we've come from behind to win a game, but we've done it today and that's good. That's another little thing out the way and we we have got to to get better. Obviously, the more players we get fit, we had a few back today. It made a difference. We'll talk about one of those players in a minute, but there's others still to get fit. Patterson back in the fold hopefully soon. There's obviously Seamus Coleman back soon. To strengthen the squad, Armando Broye. Hopefully, he won't be too much longer. Yusuf Chimiti, another one who hopefully won't be too much longer. And you start getting those plays available, then the manager really does have options. Uh, and, you know, hopefully, we can start doing well. Um, let's get on to that because obviously, Everton have had a terrible start. No one can get away from that. Even people with the, the sunniest of dispositions or people who are fully in the manager's corner or or whatever um would have to admit it's been a dreadful start and that's the way it is we we know the five games before today we've lost four of them drop points in a few of them so we had to get you know we had to win today and we've done that and the manager's got a big win for himself as well today obviously coming on the back of last week got a point at Leicester City even though it should have been three we got a point, we were off the mark and we followed it up with a big win today against Crystal Palace and gone above them actually in the lead table. And it's can you build from here now? Obviously Everton have got Newcastle at home next week. Now we'll be more confident, obviously. It's at Goodison Park, it's our five. Newcastle have got a lot of points this season, but I've seen quite a few of their games. They've not been great, but they have been getting results. So that's a game, if Everton are right on it and right up for it and defend properly, that could be a game Everton could win. Then there's the international break. And then obviously after the international break, we've got Ipswich away, Fulham at home, Southampton away and West Ham away. I think that takes us then to the next international break. So obviously there's points there for Everton in this part of the season. Now, we've blown, in my opinion, we've blown points against Brighton at home. I thought they were at bang average until it went, we went down to 10 then. They were two up and then they, they thoroughly deserved it. Tottenham, no complaints whatsoever. Bournemouth was a, was a was really poor. You know, I think the manager's subs made a huge difference, but the players have got to do better. Villa away, 2-0, really poor. Again, changes were a bit strange. Leicester away, we blew. But we've come back today and we've got a win today and it's from now. Can we do it? And if we can, then we'll get ourselves into a much, much healthier position. This squad is more than good enough to be halfway up the table. People who think differently, that's fine. That's fine. But this, these players are far better than uh, some people think. And it's how you craft them. It's how you get them organised, how you get them playing. They've got to do it as well. But they've got to get the belief. And hopefully now, the last couple of games will have given them a bit of belief. Took so four points out of six. That's how you can look at it. Obviously, if we were to lose against Newcastle next week, we'd be back to square one in my eyes. If the pressure would be back on, people would start, you know, oh, it's going to be a long season and, and all of that stuff starts. So let's try and really build on this today. This is a big win today. doesn't matter that we weren't amazing because we weren't. doesn't matter that we didn't create 25 chances because it just didn't. Today was about getting three points and the players have done that. And the manager's done it, and that's that's all you can you can do when you go out to win games of football. Everton have won that game of football today. It's time to build on it now. We're in a we're, like I've just said, I've just listed the games. We're going into a run of games where we could really set ourselves up for a comfortable position. If we don't take advantage of these games, then of course big questions will be asked again. It's on them now because this is a next period. Every game's difficult in the Premier League, excuse me. <clears throat> but we're in a run of games that I think we can get points from. We've got to keep adding them points on because 
I think after that we go in. I know December looks terrible. December looks really difficult on paper. Everton generally do all right when it looks like that, but that's how it looks. It's all about adding them points on. We all want a better and more comfortable final season at Goodison Park, don't we? So, being a good start today, let's build on it now. Let's build on that. Uh, the play, again, just talking about building on it and welcoming injuries back. Jared Branthwaite back in the Everton side today. Everton have won the game. It just shows that it's important to us. I think it's the balance, the calmness, the ability on the ball that he plays with. I think the fact he's left-footed and he plays off that left-hand side can just open the pitch up for us. Good passing range, calm under pressure, getting better and better in the air. That was one of the first, you know, the early criticisms about him was his jumping for the big lad. But he's getting better and better with that. He got better and better today. Thought the opening 20, 25 minutes, he was shaky. He almost gave Crystal Palace a glorious chance after the five or ten minutes or so, but he really did grow into it. And by the second half, he was fully back up to speed. He's up against a real tough striker in Mateta, big and strong and powerful. And he dealt with him all day. And Ketia didn't really get a kick. It loves a foul, him, doesn't he, Eddie? And Ketia loves a foul, loves a share pull. But Brantway coped with it all comfortably and you see the quality that he's got. You know, there was another England centre-back playing on the opposition side and it's good to compare the two with them. And I think Brantwaite, absolutely brilliant. Did brilliantly. Today got better and better uh, as it, as he went on. And I think he is he is obviously of vital importance to Everton. It was one of the reasons why they were never going to sell him this summer unless a huge, huge big come in, more than £70 million. It never did. United cry-arsed all summer, but... Look at the defenders they've got. They should have just paid the money. We're delighted they didn't. We've got him for another season. The club trying to currently tie him down to a new contract. It'd be great if he signed one. But, you know, I think even with my um, biased glasses on, I think it's probably destined right now to get to higher things than where we will. He will get there first, I think. It, it seems, I hope I'm wrong, I hope we get taken over by the Freakins and we go on a Newcastle, Aston Villa type surge where we just fly up the league, bring in better players and operate at the top end of the league when we can then build and, and obviously keep players like Jared Brantwain and build it around them. Let's hope that happens. But I think he is going right to the very top. I've said it for a, for a long time. And people who deny that from other clubs are, yeah, they to me, I just let it go in one ear out the other. They obviously don't watch a lot of football because he is a, such a good, calm footballer and, and a classy footballer. It was great to have him back today and Everton have won the game. When he has come back, we can see the one goal. Yes, it was a sloppy goal to concede, uh, but in generally cope with everything today. And I think that's a, that's a huge thing and it's great to have him back. And then finally, I can't let this go without talking about the freaking group who have agreed to... Uh, you know, agreed with the terms of Farab Mashiri to buy Everton Football Club. That process is ongoing. It's expected to take six to eight weeks to complete, which would be tremendous for us. Get them in, get them in ahead of the January transfer window as well. But I think what it does is, even putting transfers to one side and things like that, it brings to an end, or it will do, will bring to an end a period of real uncertainty for Everton Football Club and for Evertonians. You know, we've had... When Farad Mashiri took the club, the rules were slightly different or weren't getting implemented the same. And he come in and he spent money. And listen, I think he tried to do the right thing in terms of spending the money. As in, when I say the right thing, I meant I mean more so his heart was sort of in the right place, I feel. I feel like he tried... You know, they were quite happy to spend the money and try and get Everton where he wanted to get them. They'd done it in the wrong way, of course. He should have got his own board in, his own CEO. He shouldn't have listened to Bill Kenwright. He should have had everything set in place, got a director of football in and believed in him and let him make decisions and built. But he didn't. And all that's water under the bridge now. It's gone. We've had, obviously, the Ukraine-Russia conflict turned the tap off from USM. And that made it very difficult. Building the stadium, of course, and that will be his legacy. His legacy will be he's delivered a tremendous stadium on the banks of the Royal Blue Mersey and all that, and it will be tremendous. But hopefully, 
you know, for the last few years, he he tapped out sort of thing, and and the, the you know things have got worse and worse at the club. We are in a better period now, financially, we're in a better place, and hopefully we're in for a brighter future. But the Freakins coming in, they are wealthy. Dan Freakin is very wealthy. The Freakin group is very wealthy. They've got plans. They've got previous, as in they own Roma. And hopefully they're coming in, and they will do. They're coming in with a plan. They have taken the buy in Everton because they believe that they can make Everton a more um, productive club. They'll, you know, if they're coming in to make money. Fine, that means Everton will have been very successful, and that's what we want. The businessmen, at the end of the day, they're not coming in to make the club operate near the bottom of the Premier League and not do anything like that. They'll want their moments in the sun as well. They've got to come in and do it in an organised way. They've got to come in and do it, get the right people in. Big changes needed at the football club on the football side, on the commercial side, in the boardroom, all of that. Uh, I'm sure, because there was at Roma, there was a shedding of a big percentage of you know turnover of staff and what have you. They'll be doing all of that. That's normal in a normal takeover. and But they've got to get the football club on a strong, safer footing for us, the fans. But I do... Obviously, without we can we never say can we that it's a hundred percent done, gonna be done. But it feels as close to that as you could get. I think we'd all be amazed if that didn't go through. Really, with what we're hitting, um, and these are people with a plan, and hopefully they can implement it. And that means that we can relax a little bit over our football club. We've been a much better place. That we're seeing, you know, things at Roma going on that we can probably expect to see at Everton are changing the kind of player we go for. Uh, they have spent money at Roma and they've got the third or fourth highest wage bill in Serie A. They are determined to try and do well at Roma. They'll be determined to really try and do well at Everton. And that is only something we can welcome. But they follow a plan and operate, you know, doing the right things of the modern way and, and get better sponsors and all that. Everton will be able to compete. We've got a huge fan base. We're going into an amazing new stadium. The fans are the best thing about this football club. You mobilise them properly, they will get behind you and, and turn this into a real positive upturn in the fortunes of the football club. you just got to have owners who've got the plan and the expertise to execute on it. Hopefully these have. We won't know. Till the rim will be, of course, but things looking a lot brighter. And I've said all summer, and obviously it doesn't. I'm not a rocket scientist for saying it quite clearly because I'm doing this video. Um, most fans will feel like that, but this was the most pressing matter at the football club to get sorted. We've done that. They'll take care of all the other stuff. I'm sure there'll be inevitable changes, whether people like it or not, on the football side. They've got to get make the right decisions, get the right people in, get. CEO in immediately and uh, start driving the football club forward and if they do that we can look forward to calmer days when we can relax a little bit about the, the state of our club and start worrying and talking more about football than having to be financial experts which really as football fans none of us should have to be so really really positive news obviously the next six to eight weeks will take you know it'll take as long as it takes but I think these are really well equipped to achieve a quick um, decision from the Premier League. And let's hope that that can all drip down and we can have a much stronger, healthier and better football club and team. So really strong, positive news this week. It capped it off with an Everton win today. You can't get better than that. There you go. That's my comment. That's my thoughts, rather. Um, make sure you leave your comments below. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, as we head, we're getting closer to the 90,000. And then we're going to be chasing that 100,000 subs now. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic weekend. See you later.